in our last lecture we were looking at uh, Taylor series approximation and using Taylor series approximation for problem discretization. So, we looked at uh, solving nonlinear algebraic equations of this form. So, uh, what is the discretization process involved here? I want to point out uh, uh, you know what is the original operator, what is the discretized operator and how we are solving a problem which is not the original problem, but uh, a different problem. So, uh, that I want to point out here. So, one thing which I which I uh, stressed in my last lecture was uh, polynomial approximation actually is the cornerstone of uh, approximating different problems or discretizing different problems in uh, numerical analysis. And Weierstrass theorem gives us the foundation why why we can approximate a continuous function using a polynomial function. Now, how do you do it? Weierstrass theorem is only an existence theorem; it doesn't tell you how to construct polynomial approximation. So, we said uh, we're going to look at three different ways of constructing polynomial approximation. One of them is uh, Taylor series approximation, uh, and then we looked at example of multivariable Taylor series that was developing Newton's method for solving nonlinear algebraic equations. So, what I had been talking about earlier is that you have this uh, y is equal to t of x where x belongs to a subset m of x, x is our vector space and y is x is the domain, y is the range this is the this is the original problem and then i said that we actually end up solving uh, y tilde is equal to t cap x tilde we end up solving a different problem than what we started with so i just want to just oppose the two things what we started what we wanted to do here actually was to solve f of x that is equal to f1 x f2 x I wanted to solve this problem ok using Taylor series approximation well this original problem n nonlinear equations in n unknowns is not analytically solvable in general. Uh, maybe there are some cases where you can solve it, but in general this is not analytically solvable. Uh, we come up with we come up with a simplified problem. We actually solve we start with a guess solution x naught and then uh, we solve this problem dou f by dou x. So, this is my initial guess so I wanted to solve this problem I wanted to solve this problem ok this is the original uh, simultaneous nonlinear equations actually the way I end up solving this is by approximating ok where I end up solving this is by approximating. So, this is my t cap. What is t cap here? t cap here is a sequence of linear algebraic equations which are constructed from the original problem and what we hope is that this sequence, this sequence will finally go to so x0, x1, xk will tend to x star will tend to x star. What is x star? x star is my solution of the original problem. So, I, I hope that f of x star is equal to 0 vector. I hope to converge to this solution x star. Okay. So, this one 
is my Newton's method here. This is my Newton's method. This is my Newton's method. I hope that this sequence of vectors which is generated by this method will eventually converge to x star. Okay. What is x star? X star is the solution. So, how do we how do we check whether convergence has occurred? Typically, we keep checking for f of So, we ch keep checking for convergence whether f of x has become really small where epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 are typically very very small numbers. So, we keep checking whether the convergence has occurred and uh, we want to uh, we want to know whether the the vector where the sequence is converging uh, whether that solves this problem equal to 0. We actually cannot e check in a computer exactly equal to 0. So, we check for a norm this could be any norm, this could be infinite norm, this could be uh, 1 norm, 2 norm, whatever is whatever you like to use. Any one of the norms can be used. So, original problem has been approximated using Taylor series and then uh, the approximate problem is solved and then we hope that uh, the sequence generated in the approximate problem solution will tend to the solution of the true problem. Now, I have just introduced this Newton's method here, we will be revisiting Newton's method again much more in detail. There are many modifications uh, to make it uh, make it converge and or how can you how can you uh, accelerate. So, we will talk about it later. Right now, I am introducing Newton's method just as an application of Taylor series approximation. Okay, About uh, one or one and one half months later, we will re revisit this Newton's method much more in detail solving nonlinear equations much more in detail. But uh, the point to convey here is this was achieved through Taylor series approximation. So, the basis for this was using Taylor series. So, uh, what we have done is f of x f of x k plus 1 okay, has been actually approximated as f of x k plus dou f by dou x evaluated at x k. So, this into If you look like a close look at Newton's method, what we have done is we have approximated x k plus 1 in the neighborhood of x k. So, when I start with 0 x 0, I start with the initial case x 0 okay. and then instead of solving for f of x equal to 0, I solve a linearized approximation of this set of equations okay. and that gives me x k plus 1. So, x 0 will give me x 1, then I substitute uh, into the sequence I, I linearize at x1, I get x2, I linearize at x2, I get x3. So, this is a sequence of vectors which I generate by local linearization. Okay. So, original problem which was solving nonlinear algebraic equations was solved by constructing a sequence of linear algebraic equations and approximations form the foundation of uh, applied mathematics or the applied engineering mathematics because we cannot most of the time solve the original problem we have to approximate by some means and convert into a computable form that computable form is then used to construct a approximate solution. Now, let us look at next uh, next application of Taylor series. Now, I am going to look at uh, solving boundary value problems OD or ordinary differential equations boundary value problems or partial differential equations using Taylor series approximation. Okay. So, I will be converting my boundary value problem either into uh, into, a, into a set of algebraic equations or a partial differential equation. I will be converting it into either algebraic equations or I might be converting them into uh, a set of ordinary differential equations and so on. So, I'll, I will convert it into a standard form which then can be uh, attacked using a standard tool. What is the standard tool that is used here when you are 
solving ax equal to b right see here here each one of this problem each one of this problem is just solving linear algebraic equations each one of them is like solving a i would if i want to put a notation here ak delta xk is equal to bk in abstract form i am solving these kind of problems right this is a matrix n cross n matrix delta xk is a vector bk is a vector these vectors are changing this matrix is changing but i am solving them repeatedly to come up with the solution of the nonlinear algebraic equations okay now let's look at you know problem discretization using uh, or boundary value problems discretization using taylor series approximation what i want to convey here is that now i'm going to develop this method of uh, you know approximating local derivatives using taylor series which is something which i'm sure you have done it in your undergraduate you are all of you are aware of forward difference approximation backward difference approximation central difference approximation all these approximations local approximations you are aware and then you may have used it to actually simplify some uh, boundary value problem or some if you have done some work on numerically solving this now what is it that that i want to convey here what i want to convey here is that a tool that you are using to discretize boundary value problem or to discretize uh, partial differential equation is same as the tool that is being used to construct newton raphson method or newton's method underlying ideas are same okay problem is different application is different but basically we are using taylor series approximation okay so that is that is the uh, so now let's look at uh, okay so now this problem is like this that i have let's for the time being take a set of uh, differentiable functions on interval 0 to 1 so this is 0 to 1 and i have some continuously differentiable function okay and this is some point let's say this is uh, this is some some point z is equal to or z is equal to z bar this is a point at this point i want to construct a local approximation of derivative of this derivative of this function okay something which you know very well how how this is uh, then i'm sure forward difference backward difference has been taught to you at some point so now i just want to put it in the context of taylor series so that uh, the connections become clear uh, so this is this is my interval and it locally i want to uh, so what we do is around this point around this point we take some small perturbation okay so uh, i can take a perturbation uh, so let delta z greater than 0 be a perturbation okay let delta z greater than 0 be a perturbation uh, and i want to look at taylor series expansion of f z bar plus delta z i want to look at taylor series expansion of z bar plus delta z i also want to look at taylor series expansion of z bar minus delta z okay and then using so i want to expand this function now this function which i am looking at should be uh, continuously differentiable once twice thrice depending upon the order that uh, order of approximation that you want to develop so this is so i want to develop a taylor series approximation in the neighborhood of z is equal to z bar and then use that further to discretize boundary value problems okay so let me uh, well, i am going to change a notation a little bit instead of using f here uh this is because uh further when i develop boundary value problems i want to use a particular notation so i am going to use here u u is a continuous function continuously differentiable function uh which we want to okay so if i take u z bar plus delta z i can write this as 
यू जी बार प्लस सो द नोटेशन हियर मीन्स द नोटेशन हियर मीन्स दैट वी आर एक्चुअली कंप्यूटिंग ऑल दीज डेरिवेटिव एट जी इज इक्वल टू जी बार ओके एंड एंड सो ऑन सो so i'm going to write terms up to third order and then say r4 z bar delta z okay so similarly i can write u z bar minus delta z that is u z bar minus so here delta z square so i'm expanding each one of them each one of these scalar valued functions uh differentiable functions as a taylor series expansion in the neighborhood of u uh, in the neighborhood of z is equal to z bar okay what we know what we know about a taylor series is that the derivatives of original function and derivatives of the approximation are identical at z is equal to z bar okay this is something which we know about a taylor series expansion so i'm going to use this property to construct approximations see the first equation there are multiple ways i can arrive at approximation starting from these two equations so equation number say 1 and equation number 2 okay so one way is one way is uh i rewrite this equation as do actually we can write exact differentiable because we don't have to uh these these they not be partial partial uh, derivatives these can be exact the no, not exact this these are not partial derivatives there is only one variable so i can write d here no need to take partial derivatives <sighs> okay so du by dz at z is equal to z bar i can rewrite this as u z bar plus delta z minus u z bar minus half so one way is i can write this as one way is that i can write du by dz bar as u z plus delta z minus uh u z bar by delta z plus some terms this involves second order derivatives and all the higher order terms okay so uh i could choose to neglect the terms that are if delta z is very very small i can choose to neglect terms of order delta z and higher and then i get an approximation which is forward difference approximation so this is my forward difference approximation if i choose to neglect terms of delta z and higher order okay if delta z is very very small so if i am in a very small neighborhood of z bar i could actually approximate this i could use this this as an approximation for the de local derivative the same way is i could i could rearrange the second equation so the first equation i get like this the second equation would give me du z bar by dz right now right now just remember that i am writing equal to okay that is because this is this plus something okay if you don't neglect it if you don't neglect it this is exact equality okay if you don't neglect it it's exact equality moment with moment we choose to neglect this delta z and higher order terms then 
it is approximation of this will be uh, local approximation of this will be this is the forward difference. So, likewise I can develop a backward difference approximation using uh, this one. So, this will become u z bar minus u z bar minus delta z upon delta z. So, plus the terms which you take on this side. So, these are all these terms are of order delta z. These terms are of order delta z, delta z square, delta z square z cube and so on. So, when the first term when the first the 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 order of this is the smallest term that we are neglecting. So, in this case delta z we are neglecting in this case also delta z higher we are neglecting. So, this becomes my backward difference approximation this becomes my backward difference approximation, but these two approximations ok are somewhat inferior because we are neglecting terms of the order delta z and higher. If there was approximation where we could neglect terms of delta z square and higher ok then that would be a better approximation of the local derivative than these approximations. So, that turns out to be the central difference approximation. So, the way we derive central difference approximation is we subtract we subtract equation 2 from equation 1 subtract equation 2 from equation 1 and then uh, we arrive at the central difference approximation. In central difference approximation what will happen is that this second derivative here will vanish if you notice. If I subtract from this term, this term, this is positive, this is positive, this will vanish ok, but the third order derivative will remain ok, the third order derivative will remain and uh, what we get here is after after doing this subtraction and rearranging. So, here what you get is So, when you subtract equation 2 from equation 1 and do a rearrangement ok, you will see that this the terms of delta z disappear you get in the residual you get the first term which is delta z square ok. So, the so what we the way we write is that this is order of order of delta z square. So, the terms delta z square and higher are neglected and what you get here is the central difference approximation ok. So, this is my central difference approximation, this is my central difference approximation. So, this central difference approximation is preferred over is preferred over uh, forward difference or backward difference that is because in forward difference or backward difference you neglect terms of the order delta z and higher in this case you neglect terms of delta z square and higher ok. So, this is a better approximation than uh, forward difference or backward difference approximation. What about uh, second derivatives? I could use this ideas to come up with I could use this ideas to come up this this Telesid approximation to approximate the second derivative here the second derivative here ok. So, if I rearrange if I rearrange these equations I can I just have to be uh, careful what what I eliminate if I rearrange these equations you can develop you can develop uh, subtract and rearrange then you can develop the second uh, order difference equation. So, you can develop this d 2 u by d z square is equal to u z plus delta z z bar plus delta z minus 2 u z
okay so this is my approximation of second order derivative or d2u by dz square at z equal to uh, z bar okay and this one this one is the residual term you can see here this is again of the order of this is again of the order of delta z square okay so the order of approximation in central difference and order of approximation in the second second order derivatives is identical okay so we prefer to use this and this together we prefer to use this and this together okay we 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 normally do not use the first order approximation except at some uh, boundary points we will come to that when when we use the forward difference or backward difference but typically we use these two together because the uh, order of error in both of them is identical okay now so far so good so how do i use this to solve a problem which is uh, a boundary value problem let's let's go to that now what is a general boundary value problem i am going to write it in a generic form and then we'll come to specific examples so now i'm i'm concerned about discretizing a boundary value problem using taylor series approximation okay and the concepts that i developed just now i'm going to use them uh to solve this solve this problem now uh let's let's write this generic problem here so i'm writing a generic boundary value problem okay which we encountered normally in engineering uh chemical engineering or most of the engineering problems so this is d2u by dz square so typically we have this second order differential equation which is i am writing it as some psi this could be a linear differential equation this could be a non linear differential equation some some differential equation in different contexts you will get different differential equations now when you are studying transport when you are studying your analytical methods you will you will encounter many such equations and we will also when we actually solve problems we will also come across many such equations right now i am writing in my abstract form a second order ode can be written in an abstract form u is the dependent variable z is the independent variable z spans from 0 to 1 okay z spans from 0 to 1 and uh, so this is my ode ordinary differential equation which holds over 0 to 1 okay and at the two boundary points i have two boundary conditions okay so my bc1 i'm going to write this as f1 dz0 du0 by dz u0 0 is equal to 0 this is my first boundary condition i am writing it in the abstract form we'll we'll look at specific examples so this is my first boundary condition and this is my second boundary condition so there are two boundary conditions at z is equal to 0 and z is equal to 1 the differential equation the differential equation should be satisfied everywhere in the domain 0 to 1 except at the boundary points what do you want to happen at boundary points there are two boundary conditions there are two boundary conditions okay so this would arise from the specific uh, nature of the problem see for example if you have a double pipe heat exchanger you will have some conditions of temperature at the entry okay so you'll have some conditions of say rate of change of temperature doesn't change after fluid leaves the boundary so those conditions will be given here there could be rate for example rate of change of temperature doesn't change after fluid leaves the the heat exchanger boundary that could be a condition in a double pipe heat exchanger here initial temperature of the fluid entering here that would be a initial condition at z is equal to 0 specified so depending upon whether it's a reactor whether it's a heat exchanger whether it's whatever a distributed parameter system you will you will have different uh, boundary conditions and you want to solve this problem 
okay please remember that this original problem is my is my y is equal to t x equivalent y is equal to t x equivalent okay x here is u z okay and y here is you know uh, zero function and uh, say alpha 1 alpha 2 well another way of writing this is this is equal to alpha 1 and this is equal to alpha 2 so if i put this so this is my original problem this is my original problem which i want to actually solve okay i am not able to solve this problem exactly except when the operator is linear and uh, you know boundary conditions are nice you can actually construct an analytical solution but and that that you will be looking at when you uh, you'll be studying that under strum liouville theory you'll be studying all those those kind of things but majority of the problems where uh, the differential equation is non linear or boundary conditions are not uh, nice and simple you cannot solve the problem analytically and then you have to construct a numerical solution to this problem okay so now i'm going to use taylor series idea to approximate this problem okay so i want to use these derivative approximations okay now the problem is where do i use the der derivative approximation the derivatives are required at the boundary points the derivatives are also required everywhere inside the domain okay at how many points this this differential equation should hold at every point there are infinite points between 0 to 1 everywhere this differential equation should hold okay now when i am solving it numerically i cannot i cannot afford to formulate this differential equation at every point between 0 and 1 what i am going to do is instead of that instead of that i am going to convert this i am going to convert this see this is my domain let us put this z is equal to 0 here and this is z is equal to 1 here ok. I am going to I am going to uh, mark what are called as grid points ok. I am going to mark grid points ok. So, I am going to I am going to mark grid points in general when I mark these grid points they need not be equidistant they need not be equidistant but uh, you could to begin with uh, you know for a problem you could start creating equidistant grid points so i'm going to create grid points here so i'm going to uh, label them this is my z1 this is my z2 and so on so in general this is grid point zk this is zk plus 1 this is z k minus 1 these are my grid points okay so i'm going to i'm going to create grid points uh, so here z1 is equal to 0 which is less than uh, z2 which is less than z3 how many grid points i'm going to create n plus 1 okay so i'm going to label them as z12 zn plus 1 okay i'm going to label them as z z1 to zn plus 1 and then i'm going to develop local approximations okay of the solution of the solution at each of the grid points okay so what is the solution what is the solution of this equation the solution of this equation okay is let's call it u star z u star z this u star z is a function which is twice differentiable it should be right otherwise it will not be a solution of this differential equation the true solution is a twice differentiable function continuous continuously differentiable function over the interval 0 to 1 ok so remember this this is a true solution so the solution is a twice differentiable function over domain 0 to 1 ok uh, I am going to I am going to construct a local solution I am going to construct an approximate solution u z u z is not going to be u star z 
okay you will realize why it is not going to be uh, star z very very soon okay what i am going to do is i am going to approximate this unknown solution right now it is unknown to me i want to solve the problem i do not know what it is okay but i am going to approximate at any point Okay, I am going to approximate the first and the second order derivatives of u z. So, so at so u z, first of all, remember is an approximate solution. Which is going to be constructed numerically. Okay. Now at point k, at point z is equal to z k, okay. I need, if I want to enforce the differential equation, what do I need? I need the first derivative, I need the second derivative, right? See, I need to enforce, look at this differential equation here, I need to enforce this differential equation at every point in the domain, okay? Instead of that, what I am going to do is, instead of enforcing it at every point in the domain, I am going to enforce this equation at some finite number of points. Okay, what are these finite number of points? This finite number of points are listed here, z1, z2, you know, see this domain I have marked. Okay, so uh, in general, uh, you know, you can mark this in such a way that zk minus zk minus 1 is equal to delta z. Let us make a simplifying assumption that the gap between any two is delta z. It need not be, it need not be constant, but I am making a simplifying assumption that these are equidistant points, okay. So at z is equal to z k, okay, I can say that d u by, so the derivative, first derivative, I am going to approximate as u k plus 1, okay, before that let me develop a notation and then we proceed to this. So, let us develop a simplifying notation that u k it corresponds to u at z k. The dependent variable u at point z k is going to be called u k. Okay? This is just a simplifying notation that helps us to write this equation in a very, very uh, simple manner, discretization in a simple manner. Now, now let us, let us look at, uh, okay. So, my d u, right, what is, how do you locally approximate the derivative at, right. See, this is, see, this is my, this is my z bar. Earlier, I talked about a point z bar. This is my z bar. What is this? This is u calculated at z plus delta z. This is u calculated at u minus delta z. Okay. So, this is my local derivative. What is my second derivative? So, this is going to be approximated as u k plus 1 minus 2 u k plus u k minus 1 by delta z square okay so with these two approximations with these two approximation this equation here this equation here will be transformed to see where do i want to enforce this differential equation at the internal points at the internal points in the domain. Okay. So, what are the internal points here? If you go back here, what are the boundary points? Z1 and Z n plus 1. So, I should enforce the differential equation at all the internal grid points. Okay. So, I am enforcing this differential equation at all the internal grid points. Okay. How many equations I will get here? n minus 1 equations I will get. Okay. In how many variables? What are the number of variables? What are the unknowns? Just look here. My unknown is u1, 
U2, U3, in general UK, UK minus 1, UK plus 1, how many unknowns are there? N plus 1, how many unknowns are there? Yeah, so unknowns are U1, U2, U3, U4, U5 up to UN plus 1. Okay, so this equation which actually was supposed to be enforced over the entire domain. Okay, now I am enforcing only at a finite number of points. I have discretized my original problem. Okay, so this is this is this is uh, original problem was a differential equation. What do I get here when I substitute this? Non-linear or linear, depending upon what the differential equation is, I will get either linear algebraic equations or I will get non-linear algebraic equations. So original problem, which was a differential equation, got transformed into set of non-linear or linear algebraic equations, depending upon how the original differential equation is. So we end up solving this problem instead of the original problem. Okay. Now there are two more equations required. How do you get the two more equations? Boundary conditions. Okay. So at boundary, I have a choice what kind of approximation I use. I could use an approximation which is forward difference, backward difference, or I could use approximation which is because at the boundary point, see here, this, this derivative at a point requires a point before and point afterwards. So if I want to use central difference here, I will need a point on this side and a point on this side. So there are two approaches, right now I will just talk about one, the second one we will talk later. So just to end this lecture, I will say that there are two more equations required to solve this problem. So we generate this u1 minus u0 by delta z, so I am using the forward difference here, u0, 0 is equal to 0 and f2, I am going to use backward difference here u n plus 1 minus u n by delta z u n plus 1 1 is equal to 0. So, so these two equations together with these n minus 1 equations, okay, when they are solved simultaneously, I will get an approximate solution of my boundary value problem. Okay, so original problem, which is a boundary value problem, uh, ordinary differential equation, boundary value problem, get transformed to set of algebraic equations, linear or non-linear, depending upon uh, what kind of, uh, depending upon what kind of differential equation that you have at hand. Okay, here, so this is discretization. You realize this? We started the, the original problem in, in some space. And then you actually solve a problem in the finite dimensional space. Is Are we working with finite dimensional spaces now? See, u is actually discretized. uz is a function, actually a continuous function from an infinite dimensional space. The approximate solution has been constructed by discretizing at finite, at finite points. Right? This is a function at finite points. So this problem has been converted from an infinite dimensional space problem to a finite dimensional space problem. Why? It is computable. It is computable. Okay. How do you get a better and better approximation? You take more and more points, but you know, whatever you do, you will still have finite number of points. You can take, you know, somebody might say I will take 100 points, somebody might say no, no, no I will take 1000 points. But remember, now when you take 1000 points, you have to solve 1000 equations in 1000 unknowns simultaneously okay and we'll be doing these kind of things in this course don't worry so uh, the next assignment is going to be solving at least 100 equations in 100 unknowns that's what you should get this confidence that you can solve as many equations but these are a finite number of equations nonlinear equations how do i use this how do i solve this problem if it is nonlinear how do i solve this problem newton's method i talked about newton's method yesterday's lecture, right? Or in the programming assignment, we are using newton raphson method, Newton's method. So once I get this, okay, I still cannot solve it. So I have to further approximate. 
okay so it's a cascade of approximations not just because finally we know how to solve ax equal to b okay so we are using ax equal to b to solve this nonlinear set of equations but this nonlinear set of equations is arising from discretization of a boundary value problem so you can see the levels of approximations you have an approximation then again you approximate because the approximate problem cannot be solved exactly okay so let's let's continue with we'll now like tomorrow's class we'll see some concrete examples okay of boundary value problems where we'll take some differential equation discretize it and see what happens remember these equations are coupled equations you cannot solve them separately okay because for any point you know k plus 1 and k minus 1 appear in the equation so these are all tightly coupled and you have to solve them together you cannot solve them separately 